In this video I'm introducing an update to my Look Lab Print Detail Pack, designed to recreate the look and feel of film. This pack includes details for negative film looks, a lab detail for fine tuning and a film print emulation detail for the final step. I walk you through the updates, show how they work and give real world examples. So let's get started. First a quick guide on installing the detail pack. Go to Project Settings and select Open LUT folder. Then simply copy and paste the Mono LLP folder into the LUT folder. Once you restart DaVinci Resolve, the DCTLs will appear in the list. To begin, I will demonstrate the node tree setup using the Isabella test image from ARRI. If you want to apply a Kodak 2383 LUT to ARRI Log C3 footage, the first step is to place a color space transform node. To convert the color space from ARRI-LOG C3 to REC709 Cineon Film Log. Once this transformation is applied, we can then add the Kodak LUT at the end of our node tree for the final look. Instead of using a LUT, we can also choose the print DZTL. This DZTL is directly linked to the print film emulation LUTs that come free with DaVinci Resolve. The print detail provides more control by allowing you to adjust color and luminosity separately. The color slider affects the image use, saturation and color balance without changing brightness or contrast. Meanwhile, the luminosity settings adjust brightness and contrast, altering lightness and darkness without impacting color. Lowering the luminosity creates a flatter look. So here's a quick example. On the left side is a still from the movie Spencer. And on the right side, I am using footage from ArtGrid. By lowering the luminosity slider, we can reduce contrast, creating a similar look. I've also added sliders to fine-tune shadows. When we look at a grayscale image, we can see that a film print LUT naturally lifts the black levels. The print detail allows us to adjust the shadows after the LUT is applied. This means we can lower the black levels and fine-tune the red, green and blue shadow values individually to achieve deep, neutral blacks. Additionally, it's easy to tint the shadows towards red or blue depending on the look we want to create. Before applying a print film emulation and the CST, I now also add a lab detail to the node tree. In the upper half, we have sliders for exposure and shaping a filmic tone curve. Below that, there are sliders for color and density, allowing for further refinement. For me, it was very important not to overload this tool with too many sliders. I believe in a minimalist approach. Too many controls can feel overwhelming, slow down the workflow and make decisions harder. Instead, I focused on keeping only the essential sliders, the ones truly needed to shape a filmic tone curve and achieving film-like colors. Now I'll go through each slider step by step, first using the Isabella test image, later I'll show some more examples. The exposure slider functions identically to the exposure control in the HDR grading wheels. Contrast applies a filmic S-curve to the image. By default the pivot is set to the middle gray value of Ari Log C3. If you prefer to work in DaVinci Wide Gamut, I also included this digital version optimized for that color space. Increasing contrast expands the tonal range, deepening shadows and brightening highlights. On the waveform monitor, this is visible as black levels pushing closer to zero and highlights moving towards peak white. The same behavior can be observed when using the native contrast control in DaVinci. I added a new slider to this detail that controls how contrast expands the image towards deep blacks and extreme highlights. This slider is called Tone Compression. The Tone Compression slider gradually rolls off the extremes in shadows and highlights, smoothly blending them into the midtones. This creates a filmic, organic look while maintaining contrast without harsh clipping. When I toggle the node on and off, you can see that while I've added more contrast, the highlights retain a smooth roll-off instead of being pushed into extremes. Now here's another example. I increase contrast, 
then add tone compression to smooth out the adjustments made by the contrast, preventing harsh highlights and deep shadows. The highlight sliders set the clipping threshold for the brightest area of your image. Lowering it helps prevent blown out highlights by retaining detail in the lightest regions. The black point slider defines the darkest threshold of your image. Increasing the slider lifts the shadows, preventing crushed blacks and preserving more detail. The shadow slider fine tunes the dark regions of your image. It either deepens or lifts these areas in a very controlled, smooth manner to bring out subtle details. The shadow range slider determines how broadly the shadow adjustments are applied across the tonal spectrum. It creates a gentle gradient from the deepest blacks to the midtones for a well rounded effect. So we can see it here on a grayscale image. If I set the range to very low, it will only affect a very narrow range near black and if I increase the range, the shadow adjustments will have a more broad effect. So if I set the range slider very low, we only affect the very dark areas and if I increase the range, now we are affecting the shadows more in a broader way. Now let's move on to color. The saturation slider works in the same way as the native saturation control in DaVinci. The subtractive saturation slider adjusts U values using a subtractive color model, allowing for increasing saturation without brightening the colors. Sometimes I like to lower the standard saturation slider slightly and increase subtractive saturation for a more balanced natural look. The deep saturation slider prevents the brightest areas from being affected by subtractive saturation, keeping highlights clean and untouched. So increasing the slider ensures that highlights remain unaffected. The density sliders adjust the brightness of a specific hue, making them darker or lighter. The deep density slider prevents the brightest areas from being affected by the density adjustments. Next there is the deset highlight slider. Film highlights can have a unique quality where intense light results in lower saturation. The deset highlight slider is designed to mimic this aspect of film behavior. Next, the two-strip slider. This slider emulates the classic two-strip Technicolor process. Instead of pushing the slider all the way up, I often prefer to set it around 10 to 20%. This subtle adjustment introduces a gentle color separation, enhancing warm tones while keeping cool tones intact, creating a subtle orange and teal look. Next, the bleach bypass slider. This effect is inspired by the traditional bleach bypass technique used in film processing, where the bleach step is skipped, resulting in high contrast and reduced saturation. Now I'll talk about the look details. The look details provide a range of negative film emulations designed to give Arilog C3 footage the characteristics of well-known film stocks. These details act as a foundation a starting point that preserve middle gray, ensuring no unwanted shifts in exposure. The reason for adding a look detail is simple. Film print emulation LUTs are designed for scanned negative film, not digital footage. By first applying a look detail, we establish the right film-like base, allowing the print stage to work more naturally. Here are some examples. As you can see, the color shifts might seem subtle, but each look is built on a foundation of 40 finely tuned parameters. Depending on the footage, you can notice these fine nuances, especially in the highlights. While the look details are designed to work without extensive adjustments, they include a single skin bias slider. 
This allows for fine-tuning of skin tones, shifting them slightly towards magenta or green based on user preference. For a bit of fun, here I'm working with a log image that Steve Yedlin shared on Twitter some time ago. First I applied a print detail and a negative film look. I make a slight adjustment to the saturation in the lab detail. Applying the utility detail at the timeline level reveals that my skin tone level align more closely with the skin tone line, whereas Steve Yetlin's look tends to shift more towards green. To address this, I'll add a note, slightly adjust the offset to push the tones more towards green, and tweak the highlights a bit. Achieving a 100% match isn't the goal here. For more details, please visit my website, where you find all the information and a free demo version. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and see you next time.